ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, dinner time is here. That's right, we're talking about the season finale of Hannibal on Dish by Dish. Well, greetings and salutations, Internet. It's your old pal, Patrick Hamilton, coming to you once again from the... Uh, jail they have inside FBI headquarters that I'm not entirely sure they have. This is the Dish by Dish podcast where we watch an episode of Hannibal and then we talk about it. And of course, there's only one person that I trust that if I throw up an ear, I'll call her over because now after five years of talking to her almost every single week, I now have her phone number. The one, the only (laughs) Gina Radcliffe. How are you doing today, Gina? Uh, I'm doing great, uh, considering uh, about two weeks ago, I almost died. Yeah, let's, um, if you came here for Hannibal. (laughs) um, Sorry. We're we're sorry about that. (laughs) You may have noticed that our schedule is interrupted and I was vague when I told you about it. But let's just get into as much of this that you want to get, because obviously this this is your life and your body and your health. So you do not have to divulge anything more than you want to, but let's face facts. Uh, You were knock, knock, knocking on heaven's door. uh, I, 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 I was, I was, uh, you know, I was taking a little, a little dance with, uh, with, with, uh, the devil uh, in the pale moonlight. it's the devil of hell moonlight. Yes, I was. I was very, very close to the light. I, oh, I saw man. little Carol Ann. I almost escorted. She almost escorted me to the other side. Oh, no. oh God, that's not a good sign at all. No, uh, it really isn't. I do not. I, I, I do not endorse almost dying. It wasn't <laughs> fun. Surprisingly, not painful, but also not fun. So you know, I, I I have to say I I must say that the uh, you know Will you know waking up sweaty and vomiting into a sink was a little too relatable because that's how all this started for me. <laughs> so, uh, but replace the ear with what? Like a Danish that you had picked up, or I just I was unable to keep anything down, uh, except mm. uh, oddly enough, uh, Dunkin' Donuts uh, pink drink. I don't know what sort of magical <laughs> fluid is in there, but it, it, uh-huh. it stayed in my body. Whereas applesauce, Jello, rice, none of these, none of these things. Oh, as soon as as soon as I entered my, they entered my body. Like, yeah, nope, we're we're not staying very long. Um, <laughs> Oh, no, okay. I actually to to uh, to be blunt about it, my kidneys failed. Hmm. You so, scared the living yeah. hell out of me. I, 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 this is not your fault, but uh, this when you had said like I'm not feeling so well, don't worry, it's not COVID. I was like, oh, all right, you know, wipe the sweat off my brow. But when you wouldn't respond to I <laughs> to DMs. <laughs> I didn't. I, I like, didn't respond to anybody. Something is terribly, terribly wrong here. Yeah, I usually respond like very quickly to messages. Yeah. That's, some, <laughs> that's, that's something that I, I am very proud of. But it's. Yes. I don't think there's. I don't know if there's anything I sh- one should be proud of. But I do. <laughs> if you message me, I answer very quickly. Um, yes. But I I was not answering anybody because I did not know entirely what was going on. I actually thought it was, uh, it was uh, anemia and I did not want to say, Oh, well it's this. And then two days later I say, well, no, it was actually this. I wanted right, to, right, right. I wanted to wait until I knew fully what was going on. And also to be pretty sure that I was not in fact going to die before I, uh, <laughs> I, uh, I let people. But Gina, if you are going to die, you really need to, setting up a flare yeah, but because- that's sad, though. <laughs> i don't want to have that de- i don't want to have that depressing conversation with you know a bunch of different people <laughs> uh, well you we we need to designate spokespeople then between the two of us yeah i mean i don't want to like say oh by the way bad news <laughs> you know? yeah no like- no i didn't i don't want to hear it but <laughs> it was it, the not knowing anything panicked me uh, a lot, and you should not feel bad about this. Obviously, you were. Yeah, I wasn't. It wasn't just you. Situation. I I was not 
there was pretty much no one that was really 100% n- knew what was going on. And right. even I didn't for, for about the first couple of days, mostly because I was unconscious. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, so. But, but honest to God, I am feeling so much better. Oh, I, thank than, God. Than, than, <laughs> than I was like, even like, like a month or two before all this really started going on. And, and like, I just, it's amazing. Now I do have to do dialysis, Mm -hmm. which fucking sucks, but it's better than the alternative. Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's, that's the story. Oh my God. Gina, 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 Gina. So yeah, I I did, I did not vomit an ear into the sink though. (laughs) Well, metaphorically, I think we've all vomited an ear into the sink. Yeah, nor nor did I have like any sort of bizarre uh, hallucinations of like an entirely black antler person <laughs> just stalking up the halls of the, yeah, uh, the that yeah that's I, I did not have that going on. <laughs> uh, yeah, this this episode's full of some serious nightmare imagery, and the whole time, you know, it's very hard to disconnect from not only what you and I are going through personally or, uh, you know, the situation we find ourselves in beyond that, which uh, we have to admit for our audience, this is a very late in the game recording. Usually uh, we have these in the bag, sometimes weeks, uh, occasionally yeah, a month. This is, a this is recorded. This is going out tomorrow. tomorrow yeah. <laughs> like, so if we fuck up or don't get a character's name right, just yeah. just let it go. Let yeah, it go. I mean, we, would, we would love to be more on the ball, but. Because uh, it's yeah. probably not even going to be. It. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's It's just hard. It's hard to concentrate. Like I have had multiple assignments due during this whole kerfluffle for various shows. Those shows um, are not currently in production right now because they have all been shut down due to Los Angeles County's massive COVID-19 exposure. Yeah, we are both like very close to death. (laughs) (laughs) And, and And it's very weird. Yeah. It just, I remember when we would have conversations in, in March and in April where we taught, where we heard, you know, I would always hear the sirens in the background of your old place. Right. And that, you know, stuck with me and I'm like, Oh, I, you know, that's something I, I certainly hope that I would not find myself in the middle of. Well, guess what? (laughs) Now, now, oh, the tables have turned. The tables have turned. Uh, and uh, the inundation of ambulance sirens that I hear on a daily basis is very disturbing. Obviously, I want those people to get all the help they possibly can. But I am also very aware that there are no beds for those people to go to currently. Like... Yeah, our ICUs I use are at a hundred and fifty percent. That's yeah, not a I mean, every, number. every time every time I had to go take be taken for any kind of like procedure, you know, I had to put a mask on. Uh, mm-hmm. I was only allowed one visitor at a time because of COVID. You know, I had like several COVID tests just in the in the week and a half that I was in the hospital. Yeah. Um, and on top of that, we have um, we had a d- democracy that was on shaky feet before. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then uh, President Grifter in chief decided to point towards Congress and said, go down there, go down there and show them what's what. And they did. And he's like, we all, we all collectively, we all collectively fell through the ice, like the dead zone. <laughs> <laughs> um it's uh you know but good news everyone he totally regrets it because it didn't look good on television so there's that <laughs> he's really learned Jesus a lesson this Christ. time Jesus Christ. <laughs> it looked low class to him the insurrection 
in the like the guy of running around with the Viking helmet. Yeah, yeah, you know. He doesn't, he doesn't want he doesn't want those people as his supporters. The the uh, quote unquote obvious Antifa, uh, you know, stand in who turns out was at those BLM marches with a sign that says Q sent me. So obviously. <laughs> Up to his eyeballs when Antifa HR hears about this. Boy, he is going to be in trouble. Um, oh, Jesus Christ. Gina? I literally had to tell you to, to stop watching the news today. <laughs> well, I had to get shit done. I had to write funny scripts for a sitcom that cannot film right now. <laughs> it's just... Oh, Lord have mercy. I apologize to Topher Grace in advance, but, you know, it they might be a little sour on first read, but I promise you there are jokes there. Um, <laughs> it was, uh, it's hard. It's hard not to because it, it's one thing when it's like a, a calamity of, of social mores, like him calling up the, the state, secretary of state of Georgia and saying, hey, do me a favor. If 11,000 plus votes fall off a truck, would you give them to me, please? Just make it happen, man. Make, make yeah. it happen. What is 11,000 votes to you or I? Let's just like, you know, swing an election, you know. It's a nice country. It'd be a shame if something happened to it. And then he fucking sent someone to have something happen to it. And people are like, oh, I don't know. Uh, should we do something about it? I mean, he only has 13 days left to fuck up the country even more. And, Why and not then, just and wait then, it out? And then this approximately six minutes before starting this recording, I saw on Twitter <laughs> that, that you know, in fact, there, this had been a planned event that yeah. people knew about back in December. Mm -hmm. And, and, that and the, what was done about it? Nothing. No. no. And the Capitol Police uh, let a lot of people in because uh, the, 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 the rioters showed them their police and military badges. So this is great. It's just and, 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 and now going the, and that, great. And now the FBI is you know, looking for tips to people who were there and looked <laughs> right at cameras and smiled I mean, like Renton in the, middle, the beginning of train spotting. I mean, for fuck's sake, it's like, uh, you know, 80s Fox, America's Most Wanted. Have you seen this guy with <laughs> bison fur on his body? <laughs> Do you know who this is? Yes, he's all over TikTok. Just fucking go get him. Oh, my God. I'm thinking yeah, we're laughing now. about it. We're laughing about it now, but you know, yesterday wasn't very funny. No, it wasn't funny. I'm laughing to keep from crying because I have. My kid wrote a letter to Donald Trump today to um, tell him how sad he was by what happened. And he is consumed by the death of that young woman who sadly decided she was going to run into the halls of Congress and she got shot and I don't want her to get shot. Just like I don't want anyone else to get shot, but for fuck's sake, I, what are we going to, what are you going to fucking do here? Like uh, on, on the other hand, that chaos. Guy, on the other hand, that guy tasting himself to death is fucking hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Just imagine, imagine tasing yourself. <laughs> <laughs> to death though that's the thing that really carries it like i mean like top. yeah i mean like like i would think like tasting yourself like 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 the minute like you kind of brush against it's like ow like you pull it away <laughs> it's like tasting yourself like how long do you have to like hold it on yourself uh, i mean i don't i don't know I, how tasers work but it's like like you have to hold hold it on the person for like a while to kill them now, was someone else holding it, or or is because I had I, I don't I had know all I heard was he tased himself. Okay, so I because just pictured it to somebody I, like the way just I sort of picture something. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I think balls were involved. Strangely <laughs> enough, I think he was holding it in the waist of his pants, like his crotch or something. <laughs> like, and it went. Yeah, yeah he tased his balls to death. It's like that. <laughs> It's like that guy from the New York Giants who was in a New York um, <laughs> nightclub and he shot himself in the leg and had to take himself, he, he put on the injured reserve list 
because he put his gun in the waistband of his sweatpants and it went off. (laughs) (laughs) But that that guy lived and this case guy died. That part is funny. I'm sorry. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, it just says. Um, uh, So anyway, Hannibal. (laughs) Anyway, what were we talking about again? Oh, that's right. Hannibal. Um, But... It all of the the elements in this particular episode. <laughs> it's super creepy. Uh, like it may it may it may be like the creepiest episode of the whole season. Um, I think you might be right. It is intensely dour. There are no uh, those grand guignol uh, high points. Those operatic touches that um, buoy so many of the other parts of the season are mostly missing here. This is just like the end result of of this, you know, chess game being played out. And it doesn't, uh, it, it feels like for everyone involved, they might not have entirely anticipated how they would feel at the end of this game. And yet they're still stuck with what appears to be incontrovertible evidence that Will is a murderer and a cannibal and has been making fishing lures out of his victims. Well, it's also interesting because this is like the the, the chemistry between Will and uh and God, what's her face? The the the, the late the lady doctor. Um, oh uh yeah, Elana Bloom. Yes. Elana Bloom has has definitely changed. Yeah. Um, it seems like like th- th- it has taken Will being exposed as a possible serial killer for Alana to realize she does actually have some kind of feelings for him. Yeah. Um, and also the chemistry has changed between Will and Hannibal, yes. where it seems almost sexual. Like like mm-hmm. like particularly at the end, they are just like. Mm. Hi, <laughs> like, 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 you know, they practically are like, like, waggling their eyebrows at each other at the at the uh, at the end of the episode, yes. and and the, the whole scene between like Will and Alana is like so beautifully sad. Yeah, um, I mean, she's so uh, well. I mean, she's just like that... she is. She is leveled by this, just yeah. absolutely heartbroken, and because she called it. And that what's what what makes it worse is that she throughout the season has told Jack from episode one until now, you yeah, are responsible for breaking he, this guy. He's not cut out for this. Yeah, he will. He will break. He, he, the gift is a curse, and your pronouncement that it's worth it if less people die may not be worth it in the end. And she is royally pissed off because she is right. And I think she's, she's heartbroken mm-hmm. because I think that she, you know, felt sorry for him, may have had feelings for him. And, you know, and also people don't want to be wrong about someone that they have romantic feelings about. Yes. You know, that's really horribly wrong. You know, <laughs> I mean, you know not every, I mean, everybody, you know, has feelings for someone who turns out to be, you know, a not good person, but not everyone has feelings when someone turns to be a serial killer. Yes. Uh, and especially if you could kind of see it coming. I mean, th- we also have that relationship playing out between Will and Beverly Katz. Because right. while I don't necessarily know that, I mean, everyone's very attractive on the show. So you can kind of see every, everyone, you can ship almost everyone in the entire. Do they have? Do they have a little bit of chemistry too? Yeah, no, they. I, 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 I would agree with you. But she very much respects Will. Like she can see that he, what, however weird it is, the things that he does is that deep down he is a good person who simply wants to catch people who may want to kill people, may not be able to control themselves killing people. But his main goal is to stop that from happening. And she is heartbroken in her own way when she's trying to process the blood underneath his fingernails. Like She's really I, hoping that to not find what she finds on him. Yeah. 
And she, you know, openly says to him, like, if you saw this evidence, what, what would you think right now of the person that I'm processing? And he's like, yeah, you killed, killed. It doesn't look good. (laughs) It doesn't look good. And she's, you know, heartbroken in, in a different way. This isn't, she really does respect him. There's a, a thing there that you can tell, like, you know, you once reached out to me because you felt like it w- I was a safe person to confide in that you needed help. And now all these, all this time later, it it's, looks like you needed way more help. And h- how are, how do you expect me to understand this? And that is affecting because we're all caught in the, these weird cycles of witnessing things we don't want to see and looking for some explanation that won't tear our heart out. Right. Um, and then we have Hannibal and his crocodile tears. I Are they crocodile tears or does he genuinely feel like while... What he has done from the start was to set pieces in motion and see how it plays out. And here he's kind of been forced by his own game to sacrifice Will. And he's not happy about it because now he won't really be able to have the same kind of relationship he wanted to have. So do you think like he he didn't expect to actually learn to like Will? Yes. I think he viewed him in the same way he views all his patients who are violent, which is something that his psychiatrist, Dr. De Maurier, brings up. That, you know, the FBI is going to see this pattern that you have these patients who invariably harm other people and eventually the circle of that is going to, people are going to notice that you're at the center of it. Um, but he, his consolation prize is that he now gets to talk to Will not as a friend, but, a, you know, through bars as a as an actual psychologist to continue his experiment of pushing the idea that Will is a serial murderer. Yeah, that's possible. I mean, it's hard for me to to buy him feeling any sort of emotion. Mm-hmm. But no, that 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 explanation makes makes sense. Because he's he's kind of mourning that level of their friendship. Because he knows, like, Will's not stupid enough not to put the. Uh, I mean, Will figures it together. out right. Will Will figures it out right away. What what's yeah. what's going on? Yeah. Well, especially once the the fishing lures thing, which I think is a mistake. Yeah, I, I think I think like that is a little a little bridge too far. Yeah, because he could buy him blacking out while he's not feeling well and committing this one murder. Like he just got too far into this one guy's head and couldn't let it go. But if there were murders that were committed before he felt any level of that. Well, now it all seems suspicious. And the one person who was involved in that circle the entire time, you know, he does, you know, jokingly, I think, point the finger at Jack at one point saying the, the, the one, one person who would have been there and would have known where I was and could set me up like that would be you. Right. But that's basically so that Jack knows that, you know, he's cognitively aware, but and, and, ultimately he knows it's Hannibal. And, and it's like a Jack in this whole scenario, one cold motherfucker. Oh yeah. <laughs> he's Seriously. just like, well, <laughs> <you know, right? laughs> <laughs> what you going to do? Sometimes, sometimes you, uh, you hire someone to, to help you solve cases and they turn out to be a murderer themselves. <laughs> I know. Well, and it's, it's such an interesting dichotomy to earlier in the season when we had that uh that sort of version of silence of the lambs relationship with yeah it was almost kind of parental yes 
where it's like, ah, well, you know, like who could be harmed by having this smart person go do this task for me? So long as, you know, people stop dying under my watch, it's all going to be worth it. And of course, it is not worth it. It costs that young woman her life as far as we know. Yeah, Um, it's just, it's just funny. Like, you know, again, you know, when you compare Crawford's, how, you know, like the different approaches in each in each movie, in each version, like Sounds of the Lambs, he's yep. very paternal. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, and and, uh, and you know, Manhunter, he's you know, he's just you know, he's Dennis Farina. You know, <laughs> he's <laughs> he's you know, a, he comes off like a Chicago cop. Yeah, he's a Chicago cop who maybe a little who might be taking a, a little bit of product that falls off the truck. You know, right? In his you know, and he, and and and. and, and you know, Red Dragon, he was Harvey Keitel, who was just kind of a standard, you know, police chief type character. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's just interesting how, and and the Crawford here is just like, look, I got a job to do, man. Yeah. You know, yeah, and then if you can't, if you, you can't, you know, if you can't hack it, that's too bad. Yes. Because at the end of the day, like there's an element to him that is a bit of a, an accountant. Like if, you know, he wants to remove all the red from his ledger on this particular, on, you know, across the board. And if you're just, you know, adding to doubt and adding new cases and adding new dead bodies, you're not helpful and you need to be cleared off the board. Um, And that's a very interesting um, end result of what over the course of the season was giving him a home life, giving him, a tragedy in real time to have to deal with. But for all the time we spent with. Yeah. It was like two, ep- it was like two episodes and then that yeah. was it. And that was it. And then he is, is back to just being the guy who is pushing someone beyond their limitations because he solves problems for him. And then when he breaks, he's just like, well, that's too we'll bad. A new one, I guess. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's it's just interesting how he's just very you know doesn't really take any kind of responsibility for his his role in it and 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 even like you know tells him I'm you know, I I want to tell you you're under arrest I want to be the one to do this mm-hmm. and it's like why you know like, <laughs> you should feel bad about this yes he should but I I don't know that he does. I no, don't I don't think he does. I think way. he's just like, you know, you know, he committed a crime. You know, this is what you know, and this is what I do for people who you know, with people who commit crimes. Yeah. You know, I don't I don't I don't know this person. You know, who are you? <laughs> oh boy. It's just it's dire. It's dire and it, it feels sad. Like that's yeah, it's very sad. It's very it's a very eerie episode. Yeah. The, the, <laughs> The fact that Will feels the need to, you know, run, he's just, make and, like, a breakout. He, oh yeah, of course he does. He does the whole like breaking his thumbs to to get out of uh, the handcuffs. Which I need like I I really I need a really like a like a kind of horror and action adventure oriented episode of MythBusters just <laughs> to see how easy that actually would be. But 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 of course you have to get someone willing to break their own thumbs on camera. <laughs> And I don't know how many people would actually be willing to do that. Yeah. Yeah. And he's just like, I mean, he just like snap, snap. <laughs> like, right? like, well, like all you have to nothing. do is get one out. I mean, the thing is you only have to break one thumb. That That's uh, he did both of them. I think he did. No, both no, of no, them. no, no. He only does one. He does oh, okay, the same okay. thing. Abel Gideon did. He, he reaches over with one hand, snaps it, gets it out of the cuff. <laughs> now he's got both. Now he has both hands free, essentially. Because they're not cuffed to one another, so that's that's all you. You don't have to get the other one off in the same. It's just manner. one thumb. Just break a thumb. That's all just you have to do. <laughs> um, yeah, it's we're acting well, like we're whole... acting like this is the only unbelievable part of this show. <laughs> <laughs> other than that, this is practically a documentary. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it just, it's that scene in which, you know, Hannibal, the man who can smell anything 
suddenly realizes that Will is in his balcony of his palatial uh, 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 therapist's office. And is like, oh, is that all right. How are you doing? Seems you have gotten out. How, how, how stuff? And like, and, and then, like I said, the chemistry between them is like weirdly sizzling. Yes. I, I, you have to think at a certain point, this is where they start to get the idea that there's more. When they, when they talk about friendship, that's a level. And, but underneath there, there's this other tension that's, you can see. You oh, can yeah. Feel. Absolutely. And it adds such a dimension to all of this that they're not, you know, there's a lot of shows on television where they're all very attractive people. So obviously sexuality is a component of it, but that sexuality is oftentimes very display moded. Like I'm attractive, you know, look at me with my shirt off. Look at this low cut dress. Like when we're next to one another, can't you just imagine us doing it? And you're kind of like, I mean, I guess you're two <laughs> strangers. Like it, I probably wouldn't turn away, um, but it also would might just be like a car crash thing. I don't know if it would be hot. Here, the hotness of all the relationships is based on chemistry. And that does come across. Like it's not that huge of a leap to think about Will and Hannibal as flirtation. Oh, right. Not Absolutely. because of Absolutely. just their attractiveness. Yeah. Absolutely. <clears throat> so, yeah. Um, and then in the end, we get that very Silence of the Lambs tracking shot of Hannibal walking on the outside of the bars to his future cell to find Will Graham. And I think when this originally aired, that was when I said, whatever happens next, I never thought that would be the way this season ends. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's they they, they, they just are staring at each other and, and, <laughs> and they've got this odd little smiles like, 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 yeah. like, 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 you know, I've got a secret and I know I did. I know. You know? <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> it, it's just like, like. It's so. Mm. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. <laughs> well, it's such an interesting turn of events because it's literally like dr- really cornering the show in some respects because you would never think that it would be start. It, it would start. It would end its start in a reversal of where you naturally know where it's going to go, just in pop culture awareness. So, like, how do you get out of this? <laughs> yeah, Is, I mean, where do you go from, from you know, Will knows? Yeah. And and and, and that Hannibal probably knows that he knows. And, <laughs> and you know, okay, well, what are you going to do about it? <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, Hannibal has set this up in such a way that, if Will tells the truth, it only makes him sound crazier, which is yeah, kind of no one, genius. no one will believe you. No yeah. one will believe you. You're in a in a psychiatric hospital for the criminally insane. Of course, you're going to lie and tell everyone I was the copycat killer. You know, <laughs> so oh yeah, 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 yeah. What a show! I, this is the genuine yeah. pleasure element. Of, I mean, we we watch plenty of movies that we genuinely like, and we love. We watch some that are just goofy as living hell, but watching Hannibal is a supreme pleasure. It is just a work of craftsmanship and skill and verve. Yeah, and it's it is silly at times, but it's silly, I think, in a very self aware way. In in a, in a way yeah. that that verges onto camp and mm-hmm. and and it definitely goes that way much for much more in 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 upcoming seasons yeah you have very self-aware camp yes 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 it's very true so uh you know should people be watching Hannibal? yes <laughs> 
Yeah, it's as enthusiastic. Yes. If you're listening to the show and you haven't watched Hannibal yet, please do that. Don't just hear us talk about it. It's you uh, know, it's, it's just kind of funny that when, of it. It, when 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 it was in, when it was announced that they were going to be doing this, my my original my initial thought was why. You know, what 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 story are you going to are you going to tell? You know, I I, I always think of yeah. um, <clears throat> the the Patton Oswalt routine about George Lucas and and you know oh you know you like you like Star Wars? Well, here's a story about when the Anakin Skywalker was a little kid, and and you know I kind of thought it was going to be like that, and I was like, well, they did that yeah. already. They literally had a movie called Hannibal. It was terrible. Um, yeah. And then I gave I gave it a chance, and it was not at all how I thought it was gonna how, how I thought it was gonna be. I thought it was gonna be very much like a no. police procedural, and then it was like some sort of weird, you know, almost David Lynch like, you know, kind of extended horror movie. Yes, it is much more deeply rooted in horror than any of the films ever got to even though it's very much a procedural, like the procedural is there. It is woven in to the fabric of it. Yeah. But, but, but it, in a way that it's not, you know, that part isn't, isn't boring and overwhelming. Yes. Which, and I don't want to cast aspersions, but having just seen that one teaser for Clarice. Yeah. I was going to bring up Clarice. We will probably, at least try to do an episode about Clarice, but we, we have to, at least yeah, talk. I'm not going to gonna promise that we're going to do the whole season though. No, 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 no. We're not going to do an after. We've tried to do the after show thing. Yeah. And then the I, after- and then, and then, and then yeah, one of us drops it in. So <laughs> if, if we start another recap thing, one of the two of us will die <laughs> and we're not going to tell you which one, but uh, it would be my turn. And I know <laughs> No, uh, the thank you. I don't. And I also don't want it to not be my turn. I just <laughs> feel like maybe we should avoid it. So, but what I do think we would at least owe the people who, who show up for dish by dish is to watch the first one and at least give our impressions of the first one. I'm not going to talk about all of them all the damn time. That's yeah, come on. Uh, yeah, I'm sure I'm someone else that. will take up that mantle. It simply will not be us. Yeah. It, this was supposed to be uh, an every other week podcast. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, COVID happened and we're like, well, you know, let's just do more. Yeah. <laughs> While we and, still have and, jobs. Yeah. And, but what a wonderful respite it was for us. Like, I don't regret it in the least. Oh, no, and, no, no, absolutely not. It has been a lovely opportunity to chat more with you and to, to and and with with Hannibal in particular, talk about something that's a lot of fun and interesting to talk about and really fun to watch. Like oh, yeah. it's always a good time. Occasionally I've asked you to watch some movies that are not as good of a time. <laughs> <laughs> um but occasionally those movies are a very good time. Uh, for the people who listen to yeah. it. So um, we didn't properly, you know, have a chance to say uh, goodbye to 2020. Guess what? The the date may have changed. The vibe hasn't necessarily. <laughs> um, but that being said, uh, we're very thankful that uh, we're still here. <laughs> um, and very thankful to do this and that people want to listen to it and like to support it uh, means the world to yeah to people give us money to do this which is amazing it really is and i they, they I might want... give us less money after the you know, an episode which is mostly us talking about ourselves <laughs> although apparently people like that too so who knows and people like that too uh it you know we i think we do it in fits and, and spurts though it's not like it's constant us yapping about our particular lives but and, 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 it's and not you, every and, day you almost die and that's true and but also you were not like you know you know, telling you humorous anecdotes about d- denying your child of beans for six hours so. <laughs> i tried to you don't you don't, you don't dis- have you don't have funny stories about being a terrible father 
<laughs> no, <laughs> no, I, no. I, I mean, I'm sure there are moments where I'm not the best at it, but it's certainly not my goal. But also, <laughs> for the love of God, if your child needs help doing something, you're not infantilizing them by helping them. That that's a that's a common core parent thing that you should really be into. And have you ever uh, seen some of those fucking can openers, man? They're complicated. Seriously. Also, they contain sharp parts that clamp together. And, you know, just reading it was like, um, I felt the blood drain out of my face. <laughs> I, 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 just, I, I didn't hear like about the, it until later. I was like, the fuck's Bean Dad? And, 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 and I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. No, well, that was I the like, same thing. I came back from the dead like, for what Bean the Dad. fuck is this Bean Dad thing? And I'm like, all right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Let me try to sum this up in like a paragraph. And she's like, and I'm sure her that? response was Christ on an asshole. <laughs> like, yeah. As it should have been. Yes. Yes. Um, but you know, uh, if we can only get to being dad levels of awareness, uh, we'd really have a thing going on. There. So all we have to do is sacrifice one of our reputations to really put it over the top, Gina. And since yeah, you I just, died, I just want to, yeah, I just want a humor. I just want a humorous uh, hashtag. <laughs> uh, yeah, I do too. Uh, that being said, if you are a member of our audience that is an artist and you uh, like an element of a show that you think you can turn into art that might be worn by human beings and perhaps dogs. I don't know how t-shirts work, uh, but we have been approached to start our own t-shirt shop. Um, and really the problem is, is right now we have our design for the show and that's about it. So uh, yeah, and our, and, our, uh, and our image is usually our, our, our image is usually as copywritten images. So <laughs> as much as we appreciate the wonderful work of Josh Hollis, it does tend to yeah. involve copywritten images. So we have to be careful True. about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we, I don't think we would ever do anything. I think we would do the skull one. Like we can, we have the skull we kind of own, but everything else is uh, is something that we borrow. So. If you have an idea, if you want to mock up that idea, uh, please send it on to us at killbykillpod uh, at gmail.com. Um, and uh, we will make sure you get a portion of that money, whatever that money is. Um, I don't want uh, artists or makers to ever contribute to the show without being paid. And so I please uh, let us know. Uh, hit us up on at killbykillpod at gmail.com for any reason, even if you just want to reach out and say hi. Of course, you can rate and review us on iTunes or wherever you get podcasts. If you haven't done it yet, please do, because it does help us be seen and heard by more people. It helps us stay up in the ranks so that when people just look through podcasts, they're finding uh, the show, and that uh, does an immeasurable good. Of course, we have the Patreon, where we're contributing special episodes. Um not sure what we're going to do for January. We had grand plans. I think we're probably going to table the plans a little bit and that it'll probably, uh, I don't know. We'll see what happens there. We should also um, mention we, we are probably, we are not actually going to be going forward with the, the stand recaps. Yeah. That, that uh, probably should have we, been at the top because we weren't enjoying them. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> it, it was one, it would be one thing if we were, and I enjoy talking to Megan and Bo. That that is yeah well, yeah that part is great either. but but the show itself yeah. is too much of a slog to to keep doing it quite honestly yes and especially and we we've now missed to the point where catching up would just be difficult it it, it was one thing like it, it, we had a schedule laid out and it just all fell apart and of course our regular episode also fell apart um, because the audio for both Gina and our our guest. Uh, were so mangled that <laughs> I could not uh, do anything with them. So um, we're, you're getting a dish by dish this week. Um, hopefully we, we will have something for you next week. I'm not entirely sure what it will be, but we will try to limp back into our regular schedule somewhat. I, I cannot guarantee we'll go right into dish by dish season two. 
that that is not something we're gonna, we, I we, can we for talked sure about get. taking a little break. Yes, but we are going to we are going to um, do Clarice, we, which I think is in February. Yes, I think, um, yeah. only just because we have to get our feet underneath us, and as I've said many times on the show, this is the time of year where I'm normally inundated with new production work um, because all the new shows are being geared up and being made. And on top of that, um, because of production delays, a lot of shows that are premiering in the spring now are on my calendar to, to work on. Thank goodness. Uh, I'm not complaining about work, only telling you that the schedule makes this more difficult to pump out an episode every week. So whatever comes out um, might be short and sweet. It might be something different. It, might be completely different um but we don't want to leave you hanging necessarily know that we we want to do more but for obvious reasons that you've heard about um we it might be difficult for us to produce A- after almost five years we've really tried but <laughs> it, w- when one of us almost keels over it's time to pump the brakes just a little yeah but, but yeah we're, we're, we'll try to maintain the schedule as best as we can Yes. Something something will come out. Even yes. if it's just like uh, 20 minutes of us talking about current events. <laughs> because apparently you all like that. So <laughs> People, we, we've been asked. So uh, why not? Um, but until then, folks, thank you for sticking with us. Gina, thank you for sticking with us. I, I'm happy to be here. You're my, you are one of my favorite people on this earth. And I don't I don't want you leaving it anytime soon. I don't plan to. All right. Well, then, virtual handshake. And with that, uh, folks, the body count will continue for myself and for Gina. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye.